Coal of Africa has completed a, feasibil a feasibility study on its Mikado project, which has revealed that the mine has 344.8 million tons of mineable coal available. The study also shows that the project will have a capital expenditure of 3.96 billion rand. Joining us to discuss these findings, uh, Coal of Africa Chairman David Brown. David, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what we have unearthed and what the feasibility study has unearthed about uh, the kind of anchor project for coal of Africa going forward. Is it as you know, lucrative as initially thought? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, I mean, quite clearly the coal market and the whole commodity sector has obviously taken quite a beating in the last 12 months. So without a doubt, commodity prices are substantially lower than where they were 12 or 15 months ago. One of the benefits about this project, I think, is the positioning in terms of the hard coking coal properties and quality that mm -hmm. we'll be able to produce from it. It will, in fact, uh, propel us into the largest hard coking coal producer in South Africa once this project's up and going. I think the exciting thing for us is that this is just the first step. Uh, we probably have another two or three uh, of these size projects, which we can then roll out uh, on an ongoing basis. Mm. Let's look at the kind of assumptions that underpin uh, the findings today. You've got the, uh, the mine average gate cost, 865 rand. Yes. Uh, talk to us about what that means right now in terms of your assumptions around labor costs, power costs uh, in South Africa, transport costs. I mean, there's so many variables and we've seen what's taken place in mining in the last uh, five years or so. And we know that it's sometimes very difficult to predict where costs will go. Yeah, effectively what we've completed here is a model in real terms. So we haven't in effect inflated the uh, cost structure. We've kept all the elements, both revenue and cost, in real terms. Uh, from our perspective, the uh, gate price effectively includes all the costs of mining, plant processing, and obviously any admin and overhead, etc. In other words, it would be the cost of delivering the coal ex the factory gate, if one can use that phrase. Logistics costs would be on top of that. Uh, and in essence, that's why we are trying to position this particular colliery in terms of having a large slice of domestic utilization as opposed mm -hmm. to all being for export. Mm -hmm. So that is a, a shift because initially wasn't it all uh, intended for the export market? No, I think we were always going to go for a blend, but okay. quite clearly with the logistics costs being relatively high. Uh, for us, it's obviously beneficial to obviously push as much as we can into the domestic market. Would you be able to then go to the likes of ESCOM now with this feasibility study and look at contracts? Uh, I think we would definitely yeah. start that process. Uh, from our perspective... Are you starting that process? Well, uh, I think as soon as we get out of here, yes. Yeah. I think from our point of view, quite clearly, we've obviously had to get the feasibility study completed. Uh, we had to get the numbers out there. We had to obviously go through quite a rigorous process uh, with a lot of third-party review because uh, quite clearly a company can bring out a set of numbers, but you need people to actually trust the numbers that have been brought out. So we've had that large-scale third-party review. We have now got, uh, I think, a very robust and vi financially viable project. We will now be having those discussions with both ArcelorMittal, with ESCOM and other domestic users in South Africa. I think one of the benefits for us is because this project will deliver in probably 26 to 30 months' time, mm -hmm. effectively that would then feed into the potential ESCOM deficit. And I'm sure we've seen those figures uh, mm -hmm. even on this program come through, that there are potential deficits in terms of supply coming through. in Yeah, they're hungry for period. coal, looking for uh, potential producers, even junior miners they're trying to encourage. A absolutely, yeah. and I hope we fit all of those elements. Yeah. Con uh, in terms of capital expenditure, almost 4 billion rand is what it's earmarked at, 3.96 billion rand, including contingency. How is this f a project going to be funded? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, quite clearly we needed to get through this process because then we need to be able to approach the markets. Essentially what we're going to be looking at is a combination of equity and debt. Uh, the cash flows are quite strong uh, and certainly in the initial five-year period we believe they're strong enough to support a debt equity ratio of roughly 50-50. Mm -hmm. The balance of the equity we would look to uh, effectively invite partners to participate uh, in the equity of the project level and effectively while re still retaining a majority level we would look to uh, obviously invite partners in to take up quite a significant uh, equity stake in the company. Mm -hmm. That taking up of the equity stake, that contribution from the, the, both the Black Economic Empowerment and strategic partners would then bring in the equity that is required uh, to complete the capital project. And you know, going back to, to what we see on paper right now, I mean, it certainly does look attractive for investors with the internal rate of return earmarked at 30.1%. Are there any other coal projects, any other new mining projects in South Africa that compare to that uh, kind of forecast? 
Well, I think the benefit we have here is the blend between hard coking coal and thermal. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of the South African coal production is in the thermal area. Thermal pricing is something of a discount to hard coking coal, uh, and therefore the uplift that we get is because of the fact where it will be able to produce over 2 million tonnes of hard coking coal. But you say this uh, potentially is going to be one of a few other coal projects you're looking at uh, for Coal of Africa. Uh, absolutely. I mean, effectively, we're trying to reposition the, the company from uh, effectively a thermal coal producer into a primary hard coking coal producer with a good thermal byproduct. Mm. And in terms of exploration, where is that taking place? Well, effectively, we have uh, tenements just north of uh, the Mercado project in the Greater Sopensburg area. Mm -hmm. And effectively, we are obviously completing uh, prospecting uh, drilling in that area, but also we are submitting our new order mining right applications for those areas as we speak. Appreciate your time today. Thank you for unpacking uh, the uh, uh, the uh, kind of outcome of the feasibility study for us. Uh, Chairman you. of Coal of Africa, David Brown.